Hello and welcome back to the class. My friends, now I'm going to be solving a very commonly asked program, which is to find all the prime numbers from 1 to n. So basically in a range, you have to find all the prime numbers. The easiest way to do this is like this. Let us assume n given to you is 15. Now basically the range is from 1 to 15. What you can do is run a loop of i. Let i not start from 1, let it start from 2 because you know 2 is the first prime number, right? And then what you have to do is just inside the loop check if in case that value of i is a prime number or not. How will you check that? We already have a function called as is prime. So is prime of i, I will check. I hope you're able to think. And if in case it is true, then that i value is a prime number. So I'll just print i. Now this is the simplest way for us to approach this and write the logic. How are we going to do this? Let me show you. Watch it my dear friends. First and foremost, I'll remove this call to check prime. Great. I'll go create another static function. I'll call this as print prime. And uh, it void I will tell because it's going to print and I'll just tell print prime. Primes you can tell. Okay. This will accept a range which is n. Ah, now what I will do is very simple. I'll come inside that. I'll apply a for loop. I starting from 2. Going all the way till n i plus plus l tell. Now I'll come inside this and here all I'm going to do is I have to check if in case i is a prime so what I'll do is if in case and I'll just call this check prime and I'll pass i to it. That's it. It will either return true or false. If it is true it's a prime print it. So I'll come inside that and I'll tell system dot out dot print ln i. Now this is the brute force way of doing it. Right. Will this work? 100%. Let me execute. So obviously you have to call it. So I'll just go there and I will tell uh, print prime, print prime. And uh, already anyways you've taken n as input. I'll just pass in. Okay, cool. If I go press execute, let's give a small range, maybe 10. So if I press enter, correctly it is telling 2, 3, 5 and 7 are the prime numbers. And it's absolutely right. Larger range you can give, it will work. I'll just remove this. Now you must understand something. Remove this also. This, what you have to uh, understand about this is that uh, basically the time complexity of this. Now onwards, every time I'm not going to be explaining to you like babies because you have understood. See, now think about it, okay? This is the operation, which is, this is the loop which is executing multiple times. If you look at this loop, it's going from 2 to n. Doesn't matter whether it's asked from 1 or from 2, but basically till n it is going, right? Which means this, this code has a time, has a linear time complexity, big O of n, would you agree? Which means one way of writing this is, I can say that this has big O of n complexity. Let's analyze the time complexity. Very simple guys. This loop will execute n times, right? Now you may say, no, no, sir, it will, it will execute n plus one times, including the false condition. Correct. But even if I write plus one, ultimately in the time complexity, we eliminate constant. So it makes no sense. So I can just tell that, hey, this is going to execute n times. If this is going to execute n times, all the statements inside it will execute n times, which means even this checking, this condition, if check prime, this will also execute n times. Now I'm not really bothered about this printing as such, right? Now look at this. Now this check prime guys, please understand it's a built-in function. It's not a built-in function, it's our function. We have created it. Now this function has some code inside it and I'm just showing you that code for reference. We have analyzed the complexity of this code and the complexity of this code was root n, which means we know that this check prime internally executes with a time complexity of root n or root n times, which means n. Now I need to add root n to it. When there are two terms, how will you add two terms? By putting a multiplication symbol. So root n. How if you're able to think. Obviously if in case I add up everything together, I will get n plus n into root n. Lower order terms are not important to us. Is n the lower order term or n into root n? Obviously n. Which means all of us know that the time complexity is big O of n into root n. How are able to think? n into root n is definitely not an efficient way, right? It's not an efficient way because clearly you can see the as the n value increases, your time complexity is going to significantly increase. So this is not the right approach to calculate 
all or find or print all the prime numbers from uh, from 1 to n I hope you're able to think so how are we going to make it more efficient luckily for us a mathematician has come to our rescue and all these prime number related algorithms are given by mathematicians and there is one mathematician again from Greece who has given us a beautiful algorithm what is it we will check it out the previous approach to calculate all the prime numbers in a given range let us assume 1 to 100 was really not an efficient way of doing it there is actually a highly efficient way which all of you must commit to your memory and use it in every given opportunity when you are doing programming whenever prime numbers have to be calculated right now this algorithm was provided by a great mathematician called as Eratosthenes he is the person who came up with this algorithm I am just a, a conduit, I am just a medium through which this knowledge is being conveyed to you, right? This algorithm is called as the sieve of Eratosthenes. Now what is the sieve of Eratosthenes and how does it work? Now, I want to find all the prime numbers till 100 guys. Obviously all of you by now are, know that 1 is not even a prime number nor is it a composite number so I am ignoring it. Now what Eratosthenes has told or what this algorithm says is that hey listen start with the first uh, prime number which is 2 right start with the first prime number which is 2 and mark and mark all the multiples of 2 mark all the multiples of 2 I hope you are able to think 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 like that let me just quickly mark everything for you I hope you are able to understand right so all the multiples has been marked so see 2 is not marked 2 is not marked all the multiples of 2 is uh, marked I hope you are able to think then the algorithm says find the next unmarked number the next unmarked number happens to be 3 3 is also a prime number now it says please go ahead and mark all the multiples of 3 all the multiples of 3 and see the first multiple of 3 is 3 into 2 is 6 that is the first multiple of 3 then plus 3 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 if you do you will keep finding all the multiples and that is what I am just showing you like this I am quickly marking all of it any confusion till this point of time great next what if you ask me similarly it's saying find the next unmarked number now tell me after 3 4 is there is 4 marked or unmarked it has already been marked so ignore it the next unmarked number happens to be 5 which is also a prime number now it says okay leave 5 alone and mark all the multiples of 5 the first multiple of 5 is 5 into 2 which is 10 then plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 if you do you find all the multiples of 5 and that is what I am also just showing you see 5 then 10 then 15 then 20 then 25 then 30 then 35 then 40 like everything is getting marked awesome isn't it let's quickly mark it great I hope you are able to think then it is telling okay find the next unmarked number is it 6 no 6 is already marked 7 is unmarked 7 is also a prime now it is telling hey please can you go and mark all the multiples of 7 first multiple of 7 is 7 into 2 which is 14 then plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 plus 7 and that is what I am also just showing you look at that 14 then uh, 21 28 then 35 then 42 then 49 56 then 63 then 70 then 77 84 and 91 and 98 right? any confusion till there of course the next multiple goes outside the range so we are not considering the next unmarked number is 11 right next unmarked number is 11 so come to 11 and then leave 11 alone 11 is again a prime number mark all the multiples of 11 and that is what I am also doing marking all the multiples of 11 diagonally any confusion till there next unmarked number is 13 right so you just have to go to 13 mark all its multiples I have marked all its multiples next unmarked number is 17 again which is a prime number mark all its multiples next unmarked number is uh, 19 and then mark all its multiples I hope you are able to think so if you notice if you keep doing this do you notice that all the unmarked numbers are all prime whereas all the marked numbers are all composite which means in, in the sieve algorithm you start with the first prime number 2 then mark all its multiples 
Start with the next prime number which is 3, mark all its multiples. Then automatically the next unmarked number will be 5 which is the next prime number, you will mark all its multiples. Then automatically the next number will be 7 which is a prime number, you will mark all its multiples. Then it is going to be 11. Like that if you mark, if you keep marking, keep marking, you will notice what will be left out. What will be left out are only and only prime numbers. Any confusion till this point of time? I hope everybody agrees with me. So this is the beauty of this uh, Eratosthenes algorithm called as the sieve of Eratosthenes. And uh, let us see how we can quickly implement this. So it's very simple as an algorithm. I am going to run a loop. The loop will start from 2 and it will go till n. Inside the loop, I will have another loop which for the given value of i, for example i is 2, the loop inside i should now mark all the multiples of i. How are you able to think? So, how are we going to do this? Let me show you. Alright my dear friends, let's begin by trying to visualize the algorithm in terms of how we are going to code it. Very simple, let us assume an n value is given to us, 31, which means from 1 to 31 all the prime numbers you have to print. So what I will do is, consciously, I am going to be creating a boolean array which is of size 32. Now you may ask, no, 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 we want a boolean array, of the size is 31, why are you creating an array of size 32? There is a reason. And because I can't show you a size 32 array, right, because I don't have space, I am going to show it like this index 0 to index 31. Now there is a reason why I created one uh, size bigger because if you notice the last index is 31 and you can see 0 then 1 then 2. So what I want to do is the index must represent the number. The index must represent the number. So index 1 means number 1. Index 2 means number 2. I hope you are able to think. Now this 0th index and 1st index really don't matter to me. The 0th index and 1st index they don't matter to me because 0 obviously I am not going to consider as a number itself, 1 is neither prime nor composite which means for me everything begins from 2. So what I will do is I am going to run a loop alright and the looping variable is going to i. i is going to start from 3 or oh, sorry i is going to start from 2 and it is going to go all the way till n. It is going to go till the end I hope you are able to think which means till 31 it is going to go. Any confusion? And that is what I am also writing there. For i is equal to 2 to n, I am going to run a loop. Now inside the loop, you must understand something. Now this is a Boolean array. What type of array is it? A Boolean array. It's an array which is going to store Boolean values. Now you know whenever you create an array in Java, depending upon the data type, it is going to be automatically initialized with values. Boolean array, if you ask me, definitely it is going to be filled with all faults. Right? If it is Python, we will have to handle it a little differently. But anyways, let us assume that it is all false like this. It is all false. Now, I want you to understand a convention. False means unmarked. True means marked. Now, you know according to the sieve algorithm, we have to mark all the multiples of prime numbers. right? So, whenever I am going to mark, I am going to change the false to true. So, true means marked, false means unmarked. As of now, everything is unmarked. I hope you're able to think. Now I'll start with 2. First thing I will do is I will check if in case, I will check if in case the number is unmarked. If in case the number is unmarked, only then will I proceed to mark all its multiples. Otherwise I will not do. So see, is 2 unmarked? Yes. Since 2 is unmarked, I will come inside the if block and now I want to, you know, basically mark all the multiples of 2. So how are we going to do it? You need another loop for it. So I will create a loop for and there I will assign a looping variable j. j is going to start from the first multiple of 2. How will you find the first multiple of 2? Into 2. See that is what I am doing. i into 2 I am doing. Whatever is i value into 2, right? And then you should keep marking and go to the end. So till n it has to go. Now I will mark all its multiples. Mark all its multiples means make all the false values to true. So all the false values which is multiples of 2 is going to become true like this. Any confusion to left? Yes, we understood this as well. What else you may ask? What else if you ask me? Ultimately like this next, you know, i will move forward. Once i moves forward it is 3. Is 3 marked or unmarked? Unmarked. Since 3 is unmarked, now I'll come inside and the j loop will mark all the multiples of 3 as true. How are we able to think? 
then I will again proceed to 4. Is 4 marked? Yes, already marked. So I will not mark its multiples. I will increment. It will become 5. 5 is unmarked. So all its multiples of 5, it will mark it as true. So do you see how this algorithm proceeds? Ultimately, ultimately, all the unmarked numbers, all the unmarked numbers will be false. I hope you are able to think, right? And all the prime numbers are nothing but the unmarked numbers. All you have to then do is print all the unmarked numbers, print all the unmarked numbers. Any confusion till this point of time? This is pretty much the algorithm. Now, how are we going to implement it as code? Let me show you. Let's write some code. I'm just going to go and create a static function. And obviously, it's going to be void because it's going to print, right? So I'll just tell uh, C print primes, I'll call it. Because previously, we did print primes, which is inefficient. So we'll do C print primes like this. Okay, great. It takes n. Now, uh, I'm just keeping that algorithm here for reference for you. What are we doing in the first step of the algorithm? The first step of the algorithm is very, very simple. You have to first run a loop from i equal to 2 till n. So that's what I'm doing. So for uh, int i starting from 2 goes all the way till n and i plus plus. Now inside that what we are going to now do is we are going to first and foremost check if that i value, if that i value is it marked or unmarked. Now how will you check if it is marked or unmarked that we will see but even before that one array is required, a boolean array. Let's create it. So new boolean I will tell and uh, in the size of the array, I will tell n plus 1, n plus 1. And then I'll give this uh, reference. I'll call this as uh, some prime. You can call it as prime. And obviously, it's a Boolean array. Great. Now, I'll come here. See, very simple. I'll put if in case. And I'll just tell if prime of i, prime of i, right? I will check if inside that there is false or true. If in case it is false, I know it is unmarked. So I'll tell equal to false. If it is false, it is unmarked. Unmarked numbers ultimately will be prime, right? Now inside this, all its multiples I should mark and make it as true. So for that, there is another loop, j loop. So I'll tell for. I'll tell j, hey j, begin from the first multiple of i value, which is nothing but i into 2. And then go till the last value, which is n. Now, one by one, it should not increment. Please understand. If you're starting from the must first multiple, let us assume i is 2. So, first multiple is 4. Next multiple is plus 2. Next multiple is plus 2, like that, right? So, whatever is the i value, j plus that i value will give you the next multiple. So, incrementation must be j plus i, like this. Any confusion till this point of time? So, I hope everybody understood why like this. Great. Uh, after that, I'm going to now go inside this and I'll tell uh, boolean of uh, i, I'm sorry, prime of i, uh, prime of j, make that as for uh, true like this. That's why you're marking all the multiples. Any confusion till here? Yes, we understood. So uh, once you come out of this loop, once you come out of this loop, ultimately this boolean array Certain values will be true, certain values will be false. All the false values will have prime numbers. All the false values will are nothing but prime numbers. So you just iterate over the array and print all the values which are false. I hope you're able to think. So watch it. I'll just come here and I will tell uh, for and I will tell int. Again, let it start from 2 itself because first prime number is 2. So it'll start from index 2. It'll go till n i plus plus inside that what I'm going to do is I'll just check if in case if in case prime of i is it false if prime of i is equal to false then I know that it is a prime number now what should I print so I'll just tell system dot out dot print ln and what I will print is i because the index represents the number how are you able to think will this work let me show you so first we have to obviously call it uh, I'll just tell uh, directly I'll call C primes I'll pass n great if I execute it then uh, one can notice that uh, I'll give n value as 100 itself or give it as 50 yeah so
so you can notice so 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 23 29 31 uh, 37 41 43 47 absolutely correct absolutely correct so it works very efficient way of doing things right but uh, can this be made more efficient is the question can it be made more efficient definitely it can be made more efficient let me show you how see guys this is how i want you to look at it right so this is your sieve now if you look at it let's start with two i begins from two right now you must understand the first unmarked multiple of two the first unmarked multiple of two is what would you agree it is four would you agree it's four let me just change its color would you agree it is four now we're able to think so two first unmarked multiple is four i'm just keeping that for your reference okay now i'll just mark all the multiples of two let me just mark all the multiples of two great i've marked it now we are going to three now we are going to three i want you to focus i is now three the first unmarked don't look the first multiple of three is six i agree first unmarked multiple of three here is what first unmarked multiple of three is nine would you agree with me is nine which means the first unmarked multiple of three is nine great i'm just keeping it for my reference and now let me just go and mark all the multiples for you i marked all the multiples great similarly similarly i want you to understand a pattern here now we, i is five i is five the first multiple of five is ten i'm not talking about that the first unmarked multiple of 5 you see is it 15 no is it 20 no is it 25 yes it is 25 yes it is 25 are you able to think so 5's first unmarked multiple is 25 now i'm just marking all the multiples of 5 for you i'm just marking all the multiples of 5 for you similarly similarly now i think you're getting a pattern look at 7 guys look at 7 the first multiple of 7 is 14 i'm not talking about that the first unmarked multiple look at the first multiple 14 is already marked then uh, next is 21 is already marked which is the first unmarked 28 is already marked which is the first unmarked multiple 49 49 is the first unmarked multiple of 7 okay so 7 is 49 now let me just mark all the multiples of 7 for you i'm marking so do you notice do you notice the first unmarked you see where there is no other color intersecting is 49 but the way you've written code is to mark the multiples of 7 i'm just bringing the code as reference j is starting j is starting from uh, the first multiple and it is going all the way it is going all the way till n are you able to think i mean you're marking you're, you're, the first multiple you're marking is nothing but the first multiple i into 2 is what you're doing but i'm saying why should you do i into 2 when 2's first multiple is 4 when 5's first unmarked multiple uh, 3's first unmarked multiple is 9 5's first unmarked multiple is 25 7's first unmarked multiple is 49 which means don't you think i can write this as 2 square 3 square 5 square 7 square which means anyways if you start with a number and you want to mark all its multiples why do you want to mark all the multiples mark only the unmarked multiple because some other number would have marked it and anyways if it is marked you don't care about it ultimately you're going to fetch only the unmarked ones i hope you're able to think which means given a number number of iterations can be reduced if you directly go to its first unmarked multiple and directly mark it and the first unmarked multiple is not the first multiple it is the square of that number it is the square of that number which means that i into 2 can be replaced as i into i i into i would you agree with me so if i start with the number first unmarked multiple now from marking the first multiple and then till the last multiple i'm changing the code i'm starting from the first unmarked multiple and i'm going till the end how people will think that will reduce so many iterations for me oh really will this make it more efficient let me show you so it's very simple it's just one change in the j loop see what we're doing is marking of the multiple of i if i is unmarked which means it's a prime number you're starting marking from the first multiple 
I am saying you don't have to do that. Don't start from the first multiple because the first unmarked multiple is going to be the square, which means I'll make it i into i. So, so many numbers in between you have skipped. Amazing, isn't it? But of course, you have to go to the end. Any confusion till here? Now, will this give me the same output? Just execute and check it out. Perfect. Same output, no doubt about it. It works. But internally, a lot of optimization has happened. But is this the peak of optimization? No. There is actually one more level of optimization you can do. What is that? Let me show. See, what you did here is two. You did not directly go to the first multiple. You squared it, right? And in two's case, the first multiple and the square happens to be the same, right? For three, what you did is instead of marking the first multiple, it'll already be uh, marked by two. So I'm just showing that to you, right? It'll already be marked by two. It'll already be marked by two. So you did not mark the first multiple of three, which is six. Waste of time. First unmarked multiple is the square, and that is what you did. Now we're able to think. Similarly for five, similarly for seven, etc. Okay. Now, now watch it, guys. Now this is that code, right? Now my my main thing is my main thing is I want the optimization to happen in the outer loop. Now, if you look at the outer loop, i starts from two, and we are saying i should go till the end, and i should iterate over every element, and only for the unmarked elements, multiples marking will happen. But i is traversing from two till n. That is not good. Can I restrict the boundary of i? Does it really have to go till hundred, or can I make it much more efficient? You can if you observe another pattern here. If you look at it, guys, three's first unmarked multiple is nine, correct? Five's first unmarked multiple is twenty-five, correct? Seven's first unmarked multiple is forty-nine, correct? Now I am going to the next unmarked number here. Which the next uh, prime number, which is eleven. Now, if you look at eleven, the first unmarked uh, multiple will be the square. What is eleven square? One hundred and twenty-one. Is hundred and twenty-one there in the range? It's gone outside the range because n is hundred. It's gone beyond hundred, which means, which means, don't you think there was no need for i to go beyond ten? I should have maximum gone till ten. At ten, it should have stopped because the moment i becomes eleven, it's meaningless. It's meaningless because even if it was unmarked, you will come inside, and the first multiple will be the square. First unmarked multiple will be the square, which is outside the boundary. So no need to go till eleven, which means don't you think if n if n was hundred, then i should have maximum gone from two till ten. Two till ten. 10 can you please tell me in terms of 100 how can you write it don't you think you can write it as root of n root of n how are you able to think so don't you think i has to only go till root n friends so that is another optimization inner loop you optimized outer loop you optimized where and see i which was going till 100 now only will go to root n my god that's a huge change that's a huge change how all of you understood Now, shall we go make this change in the code? Let's do. Now, as I told you, i is going from two all the way till n, not required. I want i to go till root n. Now, I can use the square root function, or if you want square root to go, you'll square on both sides. So here, root will go. This will become i square. So i into i will do. And this previously also I've explained to you. Great. So this makes huge change. Now it is from two till root n, not till n. Right. Let's execute and see whether we'll get the same output. And if I do that, and if I put 50, and if I press enter, absolutely right, absolutely right. But computer is in love with you because you have reduced the number of iterations for it. Not that the computer cares. Anyways, I hope I'm clear till this point of time. Anyways, so this is the peak of optimizations that you can do. Now the only question is, what could be the time complexity of this code? definitely we will go analyze it now understanding this time complexity you can make it very difficult for yourself or very easy i will try my best to make it very easy for you so listen and listen carefully guys n value is 100 there are 100 numbers 
first thing is I will start with the multiples of 2 correct now how many and I have to mark all the multiples of 2 now if you look at it how many multiples of 2 are there would you agree there are around 50 multiples of 2 or half the number of elements are multiples of 2 because half are even half are odd would you agree with me which means which means for multiples of 2 don't you think the number of iterations I would require is this n by 2 if n is 100 50 iterations to find the 50 multiples of 2 n by 2 right the next unmarked number is 3 now if you look at all the multiples of 3 there are exactly 33 multiples of 3 33 multiples of 3 which means don't you think it's one third one third the number of elements so to, for multiples of 3 can I say n by 3 number of iterations is required n by 3 similarly the next unmarked prime number is 5 and these are all the multiples of 5 so can I say n by 5 iterations is required next is all the multiples of 7 so can I say n by 7 so do you see there is a certain theme coming up here now I'm trying to write that down and explain to you I want each of you to listen to me carefully okay first of first of all I have some I'll just uh, all these multiples I'm just writing the multiples I'm just bringing it this side I'm bringing it here all these multiples if I add them together it will look something like this so I'll have n divided by 2 plus n divided by 3 uh, okay sorry let me it's not visible for you let me just erase it n divided by 2 right plus n divided by 3 plus n divided by 5 plus n divided by 7 like that do you see it is a progression of prime numbers one way I can take n common and I can write it as 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 plus 1 by 5 plus 1 by 7 right now guys please understand this this numbers technically this is a progression it will keep progressing like this is the prime progression 2 3 5 7 now a very famous mathematician called as Leonard Euler proved the time complexity of this prime progression so we are not going to waste time proving it he has told that this is actually log this is actually log of log n he has proved this how are you able to think which means one n is already extra here would you agree I can write this as n log of log n like this n log of log n how are you able to think which means the time complexity of our C algorithm is n log of log n but actually we have gone ahead and done even more uh, optimization to us for, for us it is not n you know iterations of the outer loop will not go till n we have made sure it goes only till root n so we can say it is big O of this how are you able to think previous way of doing it was big O of n into root n 100% this is more efficient because let me tell you one thing guys let me tell you one thing this log of log n is a very small value whenever you take log of log of something it's such a small value that it is almost negligible you can neglect it which means this is root n or I can write it as n to the power 1 by 2 whereas this is n into n to the power 1 by 2 so this is 1 which means this is going to become n to the power 3 by 2 simple mathematics I hope everybody knows this simple mathematics so tell me will this take more time or will this take more time that is half this is 3 by 2 how are you able to think naturally anyone with eyes will tell that sir this is going to take more time 3 by 2 that is why I am saying this one is much more efficient than this one how are you able to think so much we have to do just to get some level of efficiency but that is what this course is all about and it is aiming at placing you in product based companies and naturally you have to get into this detail I hope you really enjoyed learning about prime numbers and the different programs that we have learned. Anyways, I have much more exciting topics waiting for you. Catch you in the next class.